Welcome to Honest News. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got the First Corinthians chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, Paul the Apostle is speaking to the church of Corinth. First Corinthians chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, I'd like to follow in the reading of God's word. Paul says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. He says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are able to bear it. Still not able to bear meat. I don't think he was speaking to all of them, but no doubt, there were some that were not developing. There were some that weren't growing. I don't believe that everybody in the Corinthian church, I don't believe all were babes. Just as today, there are those that are able to bear and receive solid food, spiritual solid food. They're not babes or babies. Amen? Let's read this again. He says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet Now are ye able. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for giving to us what we need. Lord, you know just what we need. You know, Lord, where we are. You know, Lord, if we need milk. You know if we need meat. You know if we need to develop, Lord, or if we are developing. You know, Lord, I pray, God, you'd help us to understand where we are. Give us understanding of what we need. Lord, we pray for conviction of the Holy Ghost. Lord, that those that are listening will recognize their need, and they'll know what they need to do, where they are, Lord, and if they are where they should be. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, for growth and development in your people. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing Ye are dull of hearing. Now, the Corinthian church were not able to bear meat. They were not able to receive solid, 
spiritual food. But here we have a people that are dull of hearing. It's a big difference when you are a babe in Christ and you can't bear the uh, solid spiritual food because you're not mature enough, because you haven't developed enough. But here we're dealing with a people that should be developing, people that should be uh, growing, developing, and no longer on meat. But they can't receive or they won't receive the meat of God's word because they are dull of hearing. The word dull has the idea of sticking your fingers in your ears which means I will not hear. I do not want to listen. I do not want to grow. That's a much more serious problem than a babe that is on milk and that uh, can't bear meat because it's not developed. You see the difference? One is a babe. The other one should be Developing, growing up. It says, for at a time, for when at a time you ought to be teachers. So we know these are not babes. We know these are people that should be teachers by now. He says, you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God. That's the same thing as when the Lord says, I have someone against you. You've left your first love. Do your first works over again. It's the same thing. The first principles of the oracles of God. You are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. So instead of going forward, from uh, from milk to a solid spiritual meat, they're going backwards. And they got to start all over again. That's not good. You got to go back and drink milk and you should be ready for strong meat? How is that possible? Somebody forgot something somewhere. Somebody has gone backwards. Did you know, maybe not physically, but spiritually, you can go back. You can go backwards. You can regress. Oh, yes. You can be a spiritual uh, giant in the house of God, but if you stop feeding on the word of God and you start walking in the flesh, you can become a babe again. It can happen. Your understanding can be darkened. Amen. Sad. When you, when you should be a teacher, you should be walking in the righteousness of Christ, living an overcoming life, and you're going back? And you got to do your first works all over again? For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. Again, he's not speaking to people that are babes and they just were saved. No, he's dealing with a people that are dull of hearing. They're sticking their fingers in their ears. They don't want to hear the truth. They do not want to develop. They do not want to go forward. They don't want to go any further. So instead of going forward... They end up going backwards. Are you listening? He says, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. You know what that word full age means? To be perfect. To be perfect. How many know we're supposed to go on to perfection? Not supposed to stay babes or even children for that matter. We're supposed to go on to full age. Amen? What does a believer that's come to full age look like? 
those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern or to judge both good and evil. If you can't judge between good and evil, then you're not a full age. You don't know how to discern between good and evil. Because those of full age, those that are spiritual, those that are eating strong meat, they can discern between good and evil. Amen. And I'm going to tell you right here, brothers and sisters, the strong delusion that God is sending is going to be so strong that it's it's going to be almost impossible to tell the difference between good and evil. But those that are aged, those that are on strong meat, those that are perfect in the Lord, going unto perfection, to be perfect, they will be able to discern between good and evil, even in the midst of a strong delusion. Amen. How do you do that? In the spirit. In the spirit. How can you tell when a minister is really a minister of Satan coming as an angel of light, transforming himself into a minister of righteousness. How can you tell the difference? You won't be able to if you're not full age. You will not be able to if you're not eating strong meat. That's why we must go on to perfection. That's why we must go on to develop into all the fullness of Christ. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The fullness of Christ, a perfect man, to the measure, the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, the contrast of that is this that we henceforth be no more children. No more children. Here he's not even dealing with babes, he's dealing with children. Being no more children. Remember, the scripture says, a child differs nothing from a slave, though he be Lord of all. Still under the law. You see, children of God are still under the law because they have not learned the difference between good and evil. And they still are tempted at times, and they still sin against the Lord. And because they sin against the Lord, they end up under the law under the schoolmaster. Are you listening? But we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, that has to do with deceit, trickery, cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. All these televangelists, all these megachurches, they lie in wait to deceive. They use cunning craftiness. Are you listening? It's very serious. Very serious, brothers and sisters. The message that we're sharing with you right now. Very serious. You see, those that are fully mature, those that are going on to perfection, to the full measure and stature of Christ, it says they speak the truth in love. Let me tell you this. A babe... A child, more so a babe. A babe doesn't share the truth. 
They don't. And if they do, it's in gaga goo goo form. They don't really understand it. But when you go on to children, they still don't know what it is to be free themselves, and yet they're speaking the truth, but they're not speaking it in love. It may be in condemnation. I remember years ago when I was still a child in the Lord, and I was out on the street, and I'm preaching hellfire and brimstone on people. And the Lord spoke to me, he says, you don't know what spirit you're of. Amen. That's the same thing that the apostles, when they were disciples, said to Jesus, shall we call down fire on them? You know, I was thinking the same thing they were. I was thinking Elijah. These are wicked people. And the Lord had to let me know, this is not the old covenant. Amen. This is not the spirit that the new covenant is in. Amen. The Lord didn't come to condemn or to destroy men. He came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. And so God had to turn me around. He had to help me to understand. And I'll tell you, it didn't take, you know, a whole lot for God to get my attention. From that moment forward, my message was different. I wasn't going out there with condemnation anymore. Are you listening? What changed my heart? His word. His word changed me. Just as he spoke to Abram and he said, walk thou before me and be perfect. Amen. And Abram became Abraham. Praise the Lord, people. When God changes your heart, you'll speak the truth in love. Glory to God. And because you're speaking the truth in love, you grow up into him in all things. You will not grow up in him in all things if you're not speaking the truth in love. There are those today that share scriptures and they share the Bible and even ministers, sadly, that are not even saved. And they're not growing in the Lord because they're not speaking the truth in love. You've got to have the truth, and you've got to have the love of God to speak the truth in love. Amen? You can't speak the truth but by the spirit of truth. I may know that. In fact, the scripture goes on to say, you cannot even say that Jesus Christ is the Son of God but by the Spirit. You get people today saying Jesus is the son of God or saying that Jesus is the word became flesh, but they can't say it by the spirit. Amen. A lot of lip service out there today, but just because someone names the name of Christ does not mean that, that they are departing from iniquity, that they're departing from sin. So, how do we grow in the kingdom of God? How do we grow? Well, first, we've got to be babes, start out as babes. We got to eat. We got to drink in that milk of the sincere word of God, right? Drink in that word of God. And then in, as children, that word becomes a little stronger. Amen. And we're growing, we're developing. Now it's not just about God carrying us around like little babies and just feeding us all the time and every cry we make, God answers that little cry. No, now we're going on to children and the Lord sets us down to learn to walk. Amen. And now when you do something wrong, you get corrected. Now you experience in chastening. I may know that. But as you develop in the Lord and you get into coming into being a son, no longer is it just little chastenings, little corrections. No, now you get into the area of scourgings. You should know better. Hello, you should know better by now. And now you're bringing shame to the Lord. Amen. And God's not going to just let that go by. He's going to scourge you. He's going to discipline you. 
He's going to get your attention. He's going to straighten you out. Amen. That's what God did with David. He scourged him. In fact, David said, I'm consumed with the blow of your hand. But God changed David, didn't he? To the, to the degree, the scripture says that David had a perfect heart and that he served his generation by the will of God. God changed David, no doubt. Create within me a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit. Oh, yes, God changed David's heart. Amen. So when you get to the place where you're speaking the truth in love, you will grow. You'll grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be therefore perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. How perfect is the Father? That's how perfect we're supposed to be. Amen. The word perfect means to be complete. It means wholeness. Amen. Peaceful. Peaceful. Wholeness. Praise the Lord. Not to show favor tism. That doesn't mean God doesn't show favor, but God doesn't show partiality. I mean, know that. God's love is not partial. I mean, know that. And we cannot be partial in our ways. We cannot be divided within ourself. Amen got to come to the state of wholeness. If you don't have peace in your own heart, if you're divided in your own heart, amen? Listen to me. If your own heart's divided, you think there's going to be peace in that vessel, in that temple? No. That's double-minded. Amen? A house divided cannot stand. I may know that. We are to be perfect, even as our Father in heaven is perfect. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 10. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. When did Paul put away the childish things? When he became a man. Amen. When are you and I going to put away childish things? When will we put away our childish ways? When we become mature. Full age. Perfect. Amen. Praise the Lord. For now, we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. Praise the Lord. We see in part, we understand in part. Amen. We don't have the fullness. We don't have perfection yet. We haven't come into that state of perfection yet. To the full stature of Christ Jesus. To a perfect man. Amen. But let us go on. Let us go on to perfection. Colossians chapter 1 verse 28. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man 
in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. What's the purpose of this ministry? To present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb, people. Perfection. Completeness. To be made whole. Peaceable. Right? To be peaceful. To be fully mature. Full age. Praise the Lord. No longer babes, no longer children, but fully developed. That is the end goal. How many know that? Is your perfection. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Does that mean you just throw away the doctrines of Christ? You throw away his teachings? That's not what it's saying at all. You keep the doctrine. You never leave the doctrine. But what you're doing is you're moving on with the doctrine. In other words, you're not going to just stay there in one place. You're going to move on in the teachings of Christ unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. What's he talking about? Those today that are constantly asking God to forgive them over and over and over for the same thing. They're not developing. They're not growing up. They're not going on to perfection. Amen. If you're still struggling with the same thing, the same sin, the same problem, years down the road, something's wrong. Amen. We need to be going on to perfection. Praise the Lord, people. Don't get stuck. Well, the Bible says that if little children, notice it's little children. It's not fully mature. It's not the perfect. Little children, my little children. If you sin against God, right? Sin not. But if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous, who's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is the doctrine of Christ. But don't stay there. Well, I can always ask God to forgive me. I have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Yeah, but you're not going on to perfection. You're not growing up. You're not overcoming. You're not developing. You're not becoming like him. Amen. Don't stay there. Don't stay there and spin your tires. Don't stay there. Go on. Go on to perfection. Oh, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. We've got to move on. We've got to move on to perfection, to completeness, fully developed fully mature, of full age, no, 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 no longer using milk, amen, no longer unskillful in the word of righteousness, amen, but because of reason of use, you've exercised your senses to know the difference between good and evil, amen, and now, Instead of being overcome of evil, now you're overcoming evil with good. Amen. You're heaping coals of fire by doing good even to your enemies. Love even your enemies. Amen. Heap coals of fire on them. Overcome evil with good. Praise the Lord. That's what we've been called to. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Lay not this sin to their charge. 
heaping coals of fire on him. If your enemy hungers, feed him. If your enemies are thirst, give him to drink. You know, just because you're giving your enemy to drink or giving them something to eat or giving them something to wear or doing some good thing for them doesn't mean they're not still your enemy. And hopefully they'll be convicted. Why are they being good to me? Why are they, you know, hopefully that will bring them around. But you don't do it with an ulterior motive. You do it out of sincerity and truth. Amen? You do it from a true heart. You do it out of the love of Christ. Praise the Lord. You don't do it with eye service. You don't do it with with you're watching to see what their reaction is going to be. Or you don't do it with this ulterior motive that I'll do it. I'll be good to my enemy or I'll, I'll give them to eat or drink, but I don't really mean it. No, it can't be that way. It's got to be from a true heart, a perfect heart. Amen. I'm not talking about gaga gooey goo goo. You know, we're not talking about baby stuff here. We're not talking about children. We're, this is perfection, people. You're talking about being like Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus died on the cross, gave his life on the cross when we were yet enemies. We were his enemies. And the goodness of God shined into our hearts. Amen. The glorious gospel shined into our hearts. And even though we're, we were wicked, even though we were sinners, even though we were enemies of God, his goodness led us to repentance. Amen. It's the goodness of God that leadeth to repentance. If you're going to see people be converted to Jesus, you got to be good to them. Amen. I remember one time, my pastor, there was somebody in the church that was not doing something they should have been doing with his daughter. And uh, I asked him one day, I says, why are you being so good to this person? And this is what he said to me. He says, God's been good to me. Amen. Because God had been good to him, he's saying, I'm going to be good to this person, even though they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. Amen. And this is a married, this was a married man. Are you listening? Serious people. This is a serious thing. And uh, he even told me one, one evening, he says, I want you to go invite that person to church. This is somebody that had been <clears throat> doing things they shouldn't have been doing with his own daughter. Amen. The goodness of God that leadeth to repentance. See, God's people are not on this earth to return evil for evil, to be overcome of evil, but to overcome evil with good. And you say amen, folks. We're not to return or render evil for evil. Amen. And there's scriptures for that if you want to look those up. You don't render evil for evil. Amen. You overcome evil with good. Praise the Lord. So let us go on to perfection. Let us go on. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. I've been born again, more than